Hi, welcome back. We are gonna be discussing some hits and misses lately. A lot of new launches, also a lot of just new things I've tried in my collection. I'm not gonna lie, we have some fresh newbies that did not make the cut for me. Um, but we are gonna start out on a positive note and I'm gonna run you through some things that have been mwah, major successes, things that I would totally recommend before we get into the disappointing details. Let's talk about what I'm wearing on my lips right now. This is a new release from Kaja, and I was really excited when I saw this. I'm a big fan of Kaja products, and I feel like they are completely underrated. I will say, sometimes I think their packaging really understates the quality. It's very playful, sometimes a little childish packaging, Absolutely no hate because we know my ride or dies are the bento stacks. I also love the Kaja uh, cheeky stamp blushes, but this was a new release from them and I have to say quite lovely. Still very much in the, um, reminds me of the Korean makeup vibes. It's a jelly glazed lip stain. That's literally what this is called. Now, you get, you get the vibe when I say a little childish. So this is a, it comes with a charm that you can put on this lip product. And so I feel like some people might look at this and be like, okay, how high quality could she possibly be? You know, you don't have to put the charm on this. It's completely optional. Um, all charms and packaging aside, let's talk about the actual formula here. So really cute portable uh, packaging. I only picked up one color because I thought that would be sufficient, you know, to develop an opinion on. And it's called Fig Soda. I think it's number four. This is a really interesting product because it goes on very lightweight, um, like almost like a lip gloss, but it does stain your lips and you can use this on the cheeks. It's for the cheeks and the lips. So I am wearing this, I'm wearing two blushes today. I'll talk about the other one in just a second, but um, I'm wearing the Kaja one on top. So it is the most prominent and it is quite lovely. I have to say I am wearing highlighter, so that's not completely, you know, the Kaja product popping through with the glow here, but it's really just dewy and fresh when you put it on your cheeks. I think it's gonna be great for summer and it is a stain formula. So when you put this on, it is going to feel really lightweight, really jelly like the texture, but you actually will get a little bit of a stain once it does fade off. And I have been thoroughly enjoying it for the, I've only had this for about a week now, uh, but I think it really plays into the vibe of the rest of the Kaja lineup and it's actually a very lovely, dewy, fresh looking product. Both Milk Makeup and Tower 28 have released sculpting or more contour based cream products. And I wanna talk about these two together because I think they are both uh, fantastic formulas. Um, the first I'm gonna talk about is the Milk Makeup one. Now, if you remember back in the day, Milk Makeup's bronzer, they already had uh, bronzing products like bronzing cream sticks and I love the shade baked I used that for like two years straight it was kind of like a ride or die here on my channel so I kind of knew going into this I'd probably like this more uh, sculpting cool toned lineup that they have developed and they did send me these so I have the little minis here which I love Sometimes all we need is a good little mini to do a full on review and let you know, you know, if it's worth trying. But I have to say this to me is the exact same formula as their cream blushes and also their cream bronzers. The difference you'll find with the sculpt sticks is that they do run more on the cool side. So I am wearing this today, but I'm, all, I'm wearing it underneath the Tower 28 one, which I'm gonna talk about in a minute. I will do swatches of these so you can see them, but uh, really lovely pigmented formula, which um, you wouldn't totally expect, in my opinion, from Milk because their blushes that come in stick form like this, some are pretty pigmented and some are really, really sheer, so I didn't know what to expect, but this has a great amount of pigment. I love this color called Toasted. I think it is the lightest shade that you can get. Um, and especially in the full size form, it's like the perfect size to kind of just hollow out in your cheeks. 
And one bonus for me with a more pigmented cream contour or cream bronzer is that it's really not going to disturb your makeup when you go in to apply directly on the skin. So if you pr uh, prefer to apply cream products that way, sometimes if they're too sheer and they don't have enough pigment, that's when you see it kind of like wiping away your base layer. And I haven't found that these do that. So um, solid formula in my opinion from Milk here. So Tower 28 is called the Sculptino and uh, it's kind of like a play off Bronzino, which uh, you may or may not know, I happen to love their Bronzinos. I wear them all throughout the summertime. They're kind of like a hybrid between a bronzer and a highlighter, depending on what shade you get, but they do contain um, some shimmer in them, so I know not everyone got down with the Bronzino. But we now have Sculptino, which is totally matte, and I actually do find it to be similar to the Milk Makeup formula. It's got a good amount of pigment. Now, I will say I only have one color from the Tower 28. They did send me this, and they sent me the shade that they thought would best fit me, which is called Getty. And you can kind of clearly tell it's not as cool toned as the um, Milk Makeup Toasted. I'll kind of put them side by side right here so you can maybe see in like the viewfinder. Toasted is very clearly um, more cool, whereas this Getty shade is a bit more warm. So I haven't checked out the other shades in the Tower 28 lineup, um, I'm so I'm just speaking directly on the shade that I have, but I am wearing it on top of the Milk Makeup today, and you can see it provides a lot of warmth to my skin. So I think if you're looking for something that's super cool tone, unless there's a shade like below this or above this that's more cool toned, it might not be 100% what you're looking for. But formula wise, I love that Tower 28 bumped up the pigment on this because sometimes Bronzino can be a little finicky to work with because it is almost like this glaze, like it's not totally and fully pigmented. So sometimes you can be left with, I guess I'm trying to say for me personally, sometimes I'm left with a feeling that um, it's not like super visible. Like did it do enough? Did it bronze my skin enough? Sometimes yes, it just kind of depends on where I'm at and like my summertime tan. So a uh, lovely option here with a non-shimmer and decent amount of pigment. I think I've talked about this product in my past like three videos. This is a very new brand. I actually follow them on social media and I saw that they just turned one like a couple days ago. So we'll consider this kind of like a newbie product. It's new to me because I've owned it for maybe a month now, but it's the Gen C Arch Support brow gel. It's the only thing I have on my brows today. It just fills in so dang good. It's like a powder gel formula. So when you open it up, it kind of feels dry, which I love in any type of brow product that is supposed to fill in just because I know I'm not going to get those wet, slick, cakey looking brows. And it has the power to fill in just like a pencil or let's say like a pomade could. It really does a great job of filling in all of the areas on my brows. What I like to do is start with the most product when I pull it out of the tube on the back part of my brow. And then as it starts to run low, I just move everything forward. That way I kind of have a nice transition in the front of my brows. Um, isn't too dark. So this is the shade taupe. I think it is the lightest shade. Some of you told me that you kind of felt like it would be too dark and I totally understand because my hair is pretty dark right now. This is like the my natural like closest to my natural hair color um, that I've probably seen since I was like I don't know 13 or 14 years old when my mom started letting me dye my hair. And I will say that, um, you know, when I have highlights or if I decide to get highlights again, this might be a little bit too dark. So Gen C, if you're watching this, we love this product and uh, maybe a few extra shades. Like, you know, who knows? This is just, I feel like this is really something special and a lot of people are going to catch on to how good it is. I hope they do because we would love to see an up and coming brand just skyrocket, blow everyone else out of the water in terms of a good brow product. And this definitely is an A pluser for me. Full disclosure on this next brand, I am working with them on Instagram, not here on YouTube. They pay me to say nothing on YouTube, but I did do some visual ads for them 
over on Instagram. However, um, they sent me the products to try. I was shocked at how amazing these smelled and at the price point that they come. And you can find this at Target. It's a brand called Mix Bar. Um, had never heard of this brand before. I'm not exactly sure how long they've been in Target, but I've owned um, a, several of their scents since before Christmas now, um, and I have been using them every single day. In particular, in particular, this scent right here. Like next time you are in Target and you see this, or if you are on your Target app and you can trust my full opinion on how amazing this scent smells, just just go for it. It's called Cloud Musk and it's again from the brand Mix Bar. So the concept with this brand is that you can purchase pretty much any of their scents and mix them together. Like almost all of their scents are compatible, which I thought was really cool. And they do actual eau de parfums and the hair and body mist. So if you like something lighter, you go with the hair and body mist. If you like something that's richer, deeper, complex, you would go with the actual perfume. But um, Cloud Musk is my favorite out of all. They also have one called Coconut Palm, which is exquisite as well. But this Cloud Musk, it is so freaking good. It is warm. It's like a little bit of sandalwood, a little bit of... What I like to say, rich, like you know what rich people smell like? Like you know when you walk by someone and you're like, mm, she's got money. That is what this smells like. It is so good. It is unlike anything I've really ever smelled before. I mean, find literally, if you go to Target and you smell this and you don't like it, I'm gonna say there might be like a chemical imbalance happening. To me, it's just like what dreams are made of. And like I said, I have several of these scents and I've had them for um since before christmas and i go for the body mist for some reason like you can see this is the one that i've used down the most um just because i i, I feel like it's I can just douse myself in it and not overdo it but um obviously the perfume is a little bit stronger i don't know why i don't reach for this one more often but hair and body mist one is cheaper um, but yeah, I have four of these. I have Cloud Musk, Coconut Palm, Sparkling Hibiscus, and Pear Blossom. Pear Blossom and Sparkling Hibiscus are going to be for those of you who really like sweet scents, like a sweet summertime smell. The Coconut Palm and the Cloud Musk are going to be definitely warmer, a little bit more complex. There are notes in it that you can't like quite put your finger on, but just absolutely smell amazing. Have I talked about this yet? I don't think I've talked about it here on YouTube. If I have, just re-listen and listen to my excitement about this skincare product because I'm obsessed with it. It's the Ursa Major Mountain Glow Serum. I think I did talk about it recently because it's like sold out everywhere. At least the last time I looked. You, you can't find this anywhere, so I probably shouldn't be talking about it. But I've been using this for, like well, got it like back in October of last year. I hadn't discovered what was going on with my skin at that point and it felt so amazing but I also couldn't tell if it might have been causing irritation so I put it away it definitely wasn't causing irritation that was just you know related to the other issues that I was having at the time um pulled it back out like two months ago pulled this back out like around Christmas time have not put it down since. It's the Ursa Major Mountain Glow Serum. Uh, it has star tip lichen, golden aspen, and honey locust seed in it. Don't know what any of those do for you, except I wake up in the morning and I have buttery pillow soft skin. Like that's how I would describe this. It is like a cream and an oil or like a serum and an oil. It comes out, kind of looks like Clinique's old school like yellow lotion. And then when you rub it in, it feels like a nice luxurious oil. I bathe my skin in it. Sometimes I will like slug my skin. I'll put a little bit of CeraVe ointment on top. Wake up in the morning, chef's kiss. You can use this during the day too. I wear this underneath my makeup. Amazing glow. Like it will have your skin looking like radiant, you know, mountain granola girl skin like someone who's just out in the sun has a natural glow happening beautiful um yeah i don't know what they put in this except for star tip lichen golden aspen and honey locust seed but it does something for me it's good and i will caution it's expensive it's like 80 bucks i'm not gonna lie i'm not gonna front but i'm gonna repurchase because it is a plus my skin has not had a dry flake since i've been using this okay we just, we need a round of applause for that within itself. 
in Beauty Project has a new eye cream. It's called Bright and Tight, and it is a lovely formula. It has a little bit of that peachy element to it to help kind of balance out any type of darkness in the under eye area. And it also has just a bit of illumination, like an illuminating property in it. Um, it feels lovely. It soaks in really quickly. I hate when eye creams kind of just like sit on top and don't absorb. This feels very luxe and rich, but it absorbs quickly. Big fan of M Beauty Project over here, especially in the summertime. I really love their skincare in the summertime just because it's so lightweight, refreshing, um, and I feel like I really do see results. Now, I will say I haven't been using this long enough. It, the claim on this is that it instantly brightens. I will say that illuminating property and the peach in it will almost instantly give you a little bit of like a lift, but it does have um, an improved wrinkles and dark circle claim. I don't really get dark circles, but I've not been using it long enough to really um, get a feel for the under eye area in terms of wrinkles. Also, sometimes I am really skeptical when it's like helps improve wrinkles. I just, I'm always like, okay, but do you? Otherwise, Phenomenal formula, love the way that it feels, doesn't burn my eyes. That's that's a big one with eye creams. Okay, we've made our way into some misses. These were products that did not hit the mark. Some of them aren't total failures, but they just weren't things I was totally impressed with. This first one, if you were on my Instagram a few days ago, you saw me totally, I wasn't bashing it, but I was just showing how this really ended up making my skin look and it was absolutely awful. It's the Kosas Glow IV and you know, I haven't even gotten a chance to really talk about it or use it here on my channel, but I don't think I'm gonna be putting this on my face again. Um, so first things first, uh, when you put this on, you are immediately, and if you put it on with your hands, you're gonna immediately know lots of shimmer. Lots of shimmer happening. Um, sometimes it can be forgiving, like it's not as noticeable, but this shimmer was, um, a, when you put it on, pretty sheer, like I didn't pick up on it. And especially if I wore it underneath makeup, it definitely looked better. However, one day I decided to wear this by itself. Uh, because the days that I did wear it with makeup, by the end of the day, I was just like, man, I don't know. Like, I don't know how this is hanging in there for me. Um, used it by itself one day with just a little bit of concealer. Within like five hours, I looked at my face in the mirror. There, I had a glitter mustache, you guys. There were just, it looked like I had just gone back from like the Mardi Gras parade. Like chunks of just glitter all throughout my skin. It was horrible. Even Will, I came to the living room and I was like, did you know my face looked like this? And he was like, I just thought it was a new look you were going for. I've honestly been staring at it all day. He didn't, he didn't say anything. Um, and I was honestly shocked. I was really shocked by this. And I just kind of was like, no, like I can't do this again. I can't put this on my face like that. Now, some of you, I've gotten the same feedback from a lot of you. A lot of you are like, yeah, I couldn't get down with it. Some of you have had better success mixing it with like, an SPF or a tinted moisturizer. Like I said, it to me looked better underneath makeup. It you didn't pick up on the glitter as much, but why? Like it, I didn't feel like it was improving my makeup. You know what I mean? It was just kind of like this thin veil of glitter that I did not want happening on my skin. So unfortunately, lo I love Kosas, love them as a brand. Almost everything's a win for me, but this one was not. This concealer is from Clinique and it, it's been out for a long time and I've always wanted to try it, but I never heard anyone talk about it and now I understand why and don't get me wrong, I ride or die for Clinique, I still defend them, like I, I think they're still popping off with some good products. This was not, this was, unless I just got like an old tube or something, I bought it from Ulta and they had been out of it, so I know that this was like a new shipment, um, but it's their airbrush concealer. The driest freaking concealer formula I have ever, ever used. Like, I had high hopes because when you put it on, like when you put it on the back of the hand, it actually looks pretty creamy, but once you start blending it in, it, I don't know. I do, it turns dry, like immediately. 
and emphasizes everything in my under eye area. I just absolutely could not go for this formula and I almost couldn't get it to blend out. It was very strange, very odd thing happening here. Even when I put it on the back of my hand and I blend it out, it almost looks like powder has been rubbed into the back of my hand. So um, don't know if this has been on your, you know, maybe like to buy list. Probably not. I don't hear anyone talk about this, but I just wanted to let you know it was a no-go. If you see it and you're thinking about it, Probably not. I just talked about these in a video because these are a new launch. And don't get me wrong, these are not a failure. I just don't think they really did it enough for me. Um, and I would like to see more from them is what I'm trying to say. So it's the Exa All Smiles Lip Oil. I think I used it in my last five minute get ready with me. Really comfortable, lovely texture on these. But do you see how bright some of these colors are? I get it, they're a lip oil. They're supposed to be sheer but they really provide like nothing. There's no shine. That's something that I was really confused with um, this product. They just don't show up at all, regardless of how bright the color is. And I'm all for like a good sheer red, but it really just didn't do anything to my lips. And then I was kind of expecting it to have at least a little bit of shine. There's really not. It's almost just like you put a chapstick on your lips. So I just want to caution with these. They feel comfortable, feel great on the lips. If you buy this thinking you're going to get a cute little like hot pink popsicle moment on the lips, you're not. Um, not a ton of color happening with any of these and also really no shine in my opinion. Love Exa, it's a newer brand. Almost everything from their lineup I've really been impressed with, but um, yeah, these were just like, okay, we'll probably use again for the like hydration on the lips, but not necessarily for any type of like pretty lip color. I'm just gonna say it, like I've already reviewed this, but I'm just gonna put it in this category because I haven't reached for it since reviewing it, okay? Here she is, Makeup by Mario, Ethereal Skin. Um, yeah, I just, I, I think I tried to love it and then just realized how many great complexion products I have in my collection. And this just wasn't even coming close to it, honestly. And it's just such a strange formula to me. Like the glitter perplexes me, um, the overall finish. I feel like this foundation has not found its identity. I almost feel like there were several things trying to be compacted into one product instead of one individualized, just solid formula. You know what I mean? Like I felt like he wanted the super glow with like the glitter in it, but then also wanted coverage in it, but then wanted to call it like ethereal skin. A lot happening, and I feel like there were certain things that just weren't honed in on with this formula. Um, it does not make my skin look the best, I'll be completely honest. Uh, it doesn't make my skin look the worst. I definitely had foundations that look a thousand times worse than this, but it wasn't something that I had been so excited for that I felt the need to reach back for. Uh-uh, once I reviewed this, I kind of like moved on. Like today I'm wearing Estee Lauder Double Wear Sheer, which has been like over a two year favorite of mine now. So um, yeah, it just did not speak to me. It was confusing. And honestly, I'm scared to use it. Like I'm scared, I don't know. I like, I just don't wanna, I don't wanna F around and like find out, you know what I mean? Some days it looked okay, some days it looked really bad. All right, guys, my kiddo is up, and I think um, we have reached the end of the list. I hope you enjoyed. I had way more favorites or way more hits in this video, which, bless up, we love to see it. Um, I hope you enjoyed seeing some of these. Let me know some things that worked for you, some things that didn't work, some things that you were like, yo, you're going back to the store. Uh, would love to know, and I'll see y'all in my next video. Bye.